Terwell. Montañas vacía, this is where we start. My bike is parked there, and I'm here with a special person, Ernesto Pastor. Ernesto is the guy that designed the route Montañas Vacia that was uh, uh, awarded by bypacking.com the best route of the world. In 2019. I was a bit worried as well about the problems about the population in these areas. And I, just, well, I was starting to see that uh, in other parts of the world uh, they were starting to create some of these projects like the, uh, trying to show that bikes can be a tool for change to, to fight against these kind of problems with, with population and the population. We can say that the, the whole area that covers the route, it has less than one inhabitant per square kilometer. What is practically nothing. This is only comparable to the north of Lapland in, in, in Finland and in Norway. But with a better climate. <laughs> with better climate, not in winter. Winter is so cold here as well. But the point is that in the real Lapland, the population is kind of uh, constant, but here it's still going down and down and down every year. So uh, I was starting to feel in my mind that, uh, that, that this kind of trip, this kind of route could be a, a nice tool for changing or for trying to inspire. So everything started like an experiment, trying to, to show first to myself if, if it could be possible to, to leave a positive impact in the area thanks to, to a repacking route. So I just try to design the best strategy to, to get that. So I, I knew that the bypacking.com was the main uh, place where uh, the best routes in the world uh, want to be. So my main purpose was to get an article there. Uh, so I was trying hard to make drawings, to draw maps, to, to make a nice text. So I sent the route there uh, and, and they didn't answer anything in, in five or six months. But then by mistake, one of the editors of the web page was right in, the, in this area. So I could meet him. I told him about the route. Yeah, they never answered. I submitted the route and they yeah. never answered. It's yeah. five years now. They yeah. haven't answered. <laughs> yeah, but it was after talking with this guy when he discovered that this area was so, so good that I said, I sent five months, five months ago a route to bypacking.com and I didn't have any answer and he told me this route has to be definitely in bypacking.com. So in a couple of days, the route was there and everything changed. A lot of people from USA, from, from UK started to come and it was the, the, the best start point because, because Spanish people started to come when they realized that the people from out of Spain were starting to come. Yeah. So it was the best start for the route. We had the pandemic in the middle of the... This is now the, fi the, the fifth season, number five. Uh, so we had the pandemic in the middle and, and it was curious to, to discover that some of the uh, accommodations and bars and shops brought me to say thank you because they survived in the pandemic thanks to the travelers, Spanish travelers and then uh, Europeans travelers again. And did you get any help, any any grants from uh, European Union or for the community here no. to to pay back your work? No, it, it was uh, it was part of my, my my plan. My plan was trying to create something with no money to show what can get one single person with no money to improve the quality of life in in, in my own area. So. That's great. Yeah, yeah. I think that my message is much stronger if I do it without any help. Yep. Yeah. Why people yeah. should come? Yeah, for me, the main, the main reason is that you will discover here uh, like a virgin landscape that is not possible anymore to find in, in Western Europe. Uh, I mean, uh, you will find a perfect quality of sound. You will find perfect skies at night. Uh, silence is one of the best, best treasures of this area and the experience of riding for days and days without seeing, and without hearing soul is for me the main treasure of this So the, the route is about 650 kilometers. Yeah. There are many variants you can yeah. do in the middle as well. Yeah. So you can break it in uh, smaller, um, smaller trips 
But the bigger route is 650, okay. about 650 kilometers. How many days usually people uh, take it on a bikepacking setup? Yeah, for me, I would recommend to, to ride the route in seven to nine days, something like that, to do it in a relaxed way. Eight, nine for me would be the perfect. Uh, you could do it faster for sure, but you will not get in that so yeah. deeply. In the it's not going to be as meditative. <laughs> <laughs> clockwise or anti-clockwise? Yeah, I think the best way is, as is explained in the, in the guide, that is anti-clockwise, uh, because it's the way I designed it, it's the way I think is the, the most beautiful uh, direction to follow the route. Yeah. All right. You could do it in both, for sure. Yeah. But anti-clockwise it is. Yeah. I saw the elevation. It's uh, it's quite hard as any route in uh, in Spain. It's maybe a little less hard than uh, Badlands because there's probably not like you go up to Pico Veleta yeah. and that's a big chunk. But yeah, it's it looks very hard on uh, on paper, and uh, yeah, I just look forward to to discover new this new route in uh, in Spain. I cannot leave Spain. It's uh, it's incredible. <laughs> there is one route after the other. So now is Montaña Vacía. And thank you very much to Ernesto to put it together. Thank you, David, for coming here for being part of this. Yes. Centro Historico. We are in the center of Turuel. As you can see, there are the bike packers that they finish the Montañas Vacía. This is the place where we start the Montañas Vacía. But those two guys, they just finished. Very fast, very light. They did it in four days. After talking to Ernesto, I went to Mercadona, but now it's time to start. And look at this tower, very beautiful. There are a few of those towers. where the dirt starts across the bridge from the old town. That's it. There's no way back. Montañas vacías. That's the well. The windmills, it was where we were yesterday. And yeah, already first kilometers, I would say. Very nice and gentle. Now I have two problems. First problem, I forget to get a coke before leaving Teruel, which I will. S wow, look at this view. What's going on here? Holy moly. Look at that. Looks like uh, the desert of Gorafe. A little less desert. My second problem is I forgot to withdraw money from the ATM in Terroir. Money are never my priority but I don't think you can pay with credit card in any of the villages. So it would have been nice to have a few euros to spend here and there. Yes. I, I guess I'll be, I'll be very, very cheap. Incredible. And we just started. We just started. Spain is too beautiful. Too, too pretty. It's a problem. It's a problem. This property is for sale. Be nice if someone wants to move to Spain and turn these properties into a bike bar. For the people doing the Badlands, they can stop here, chill, charge their uh, power banks, have a ice coke, and continue. 
What a place. This is the first village of the empty Spain, Montañas Vacías. Be nice if there was a bit of water. The trail goes left here, but I want to check if there is a, some signs of water somewhere. There is a church down there. Let's see. The village uh, is too small, had no bar, so no cold coke. Yes, cold coke. I asked one guy if there was a, a bar or a fountain. He told me there is a fountain, there is no bar. But if you want, I can give you a coke. His wife went to the kitchen and brought out two cold cokes without caffeine. She told me they are without caffeine. Is it okay? That's okay. I'll do, I'll do drugs tomorrow. And I got some tomatoes, cucumber. Then I went to the fountain and I washed my clothes. So they are clean and wet, which is cooling me down a lot. Well, look at this beauty. Montañas Vacías. The empty Spain. This is where I'm going to pitch my tent. It's the only spot that yeah, it doesn't have any stones. My trail is up here like a few hundred meters. It goes down that way. Yeah, I'm uh, tired and I'm going to spend the night here. And I can't wait to cook my tortellini now. I'll see you in the morning, guys. Buenos dias, I'm pack. I'm pack, I'm good to go. My trash is here. Great night, great night. Until uh, I finish my dinner, went into my tent and looked up. It was an uh, incredible sky and uh, I felt uh, I was out of place because I was in, uh, in between trees and I didn't have a full view of the sky. But tonight I'm not going to make the same mistake. Let's go. 
Montañas Vacia, day two. My day two. Most people will be further, further. But I started very late. Anyway, I don't care. Montañas Vacia, beautiful. It's 11 o'clock. I have uh, another 14 kilometers to arrive to a village called Albaracin. Now there, now the road goes up. Um, I think four kilometers, gentle climb, I think. And then it's fairly downhill to the village, which I would love to get there as soon as possible because there is one grocery store and I hope it doesn't close too early because today is Saturday. So it's most likely only open in the morning. So now when I cook tortellini, I throw... Wait, when I... ¿Qué tal? ¿Todo bien? Todo en orden. ¿Dónde va usted? Doy la vuelta al mundo. ¿La vuelta al mundo? Sí. ¿Ustedes están haciendo montaña vacía? Pero ni con, ni tienda de campaña, nada. Nada. Eh, muy fácil así. Eh, albergue. 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 Para gente que tiene mucha plata. <risa> no, no, no tenemos plata, no. No creas. Hombre, venimos tres días. No, no. Sí. Tres días. Muy rápido. 200 kilómetros al día. No, no hacemos. No, no hacemos, no hacemos monte de vacías entero, no. Ah, pedazo. Sí, el trozo, un trozo. Hacemos. So, these people are doing half of the Montañas Vacías and very light. They eat uh, at the bars and they sleep at the albergues. So they can be very, very light and they can cover lots of distance. What a beautiful place. Imagine to live here. Wouldn't it be nice? And you can if you buy that old house. That old farmhouse. And yeah, it's wonderful. Starting descending to Albaracin. I'm dreaming of a cold Pepsi or Coke or iced tea. Anything, just give me anything. like these Spanish vending machines are always delivering. Look at this. You can have a Sprite, Red Bull, iced coffee, Orangina, Monster, condoms, grinders, papers, dildo, but also a real pussy experience. I wonder how, it co how much it costs the real pussy experience. So, A62, A62. Right, 12, dollars, 12 euros. For 12 euros, you can have a real pussy experience. Albaracin, quite touristy. But yeah, it is uh, very cold water. I just soaked all my clothes. And uh, even though there are some dark clouds, arriving so it's not gonna be very very warm and it's already like uh, at least six seven degrees less than it was two days ago very nice not sure i wanna climb up to see the village i'm actually heading into the village so i had to climb up it's kind of weird because uh, 
the tracks that are on Komoot don't go through the village. But the track I downloaded from Montañas Vacias go through the village. I don't know why the, the track on Komoot is a little different. It should be official as well, because there is a link on Montañas Vacia website to a collection in, uh, in uh, Komoot. On top of Albarracin now, but it's getting a bit dark and very windy and clouds are a bit everywhere now, especially the direction I'm going. Hopefully there is not gonna be a summer storm in a few hours. I think the climb from Albarracin is over. It was steep, but nothing uh, too crazy. I had took like a, a clip, but I don't know why. Lately, I forget to turn off the camera and then it records for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and I have to delete it. But yeah, it's beautiful. Pleasant temperature because of the clouds. It's hot, but it's nice, I mean, imagine you're here in the winter and it's freezing. So it's still pleasant to me, but there is no direct sun, so it's quite enjoyable. I met another guy who was doing Montañas Vasia by packing quite fastish, faster than me for sure. It didn't seem like a Speedy Gonzalez, but very super light. We had a little chat together and they seem to be wanting to, to do a bit together, but I told him to go, like I didn't want to slow him down. I don't really enjoy to go share the road with other people that are faster than me because I feel conscious and I'm like always at the limit. They've been slowed down and I'm at my limit, so nobody's enjoying it. So it's better to part. We had like a 10, 15 minutes chat. That's good. And it's better to part. I'm comfortable to share the road with people that are uh, slower than me. Or it's different. You decide, uh, you meet someone and you decide to do a few days together. A beautiful and dramatic sky. I love it. Now, apparently we turn left. And I guess we go down. Now turn left. I'm gonna check my maps because on Komoot the route is slightly different. I don't trust it. Even today, super lazy, very slow, not many kilometers. And I stop another, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes down the valley. There is an adventure park and I got a cold drink. And uh, I digged out my power bank charge it for a little bit. The climbs are gentle. They're not walls like in, uh, in Andalusia, so it's not too bad. They are not too steep, but there are bits and pieces that are steep, steep enough, like this one. Running gear on, slowly but surely. Montañas Vacias, beautiful landscape. Yet again, Spain. What a paradise of riding the bike. I'll have to move to Spain when I finish my round the world bike tour. Hi, Packard. 
They put shoes and sandals. Dangling down their seat post, their seat bag. And they lose them. I already, already saw five between flip-flops, sandals, and shoes. Mukha, ciao Mukha. Smells very nice. So, lavender everywhere. Wild lavender. Smells nice though. So. It's a me toughish climb, to be honest. There at that junction, the Montañas Vacia goes up. I took this shortcut, it goes up at the same way. And then I saw a sign. Apparently, this is a refugio. Refugio, but it's not on my map. It's not on uh, Pocket Art, and it's not on uh, Map Out, and it's not on that uh, very good map of Komoot. Uh, it's a uh, it's really basic. It's not even level. It's a refugio, just in case you you really need a refugio. Just in case it's uh, the weather is really bad. But yeah, I'm thinking to camp down there anyway. I'm at uh, four or five kilometers from a village. Well, what's the point? After the village, so I need to go up there, down to the village, and then there is a steep climb leaving the village. It's still not the sunset. Still another, I could pedal another 40 minutes, 50 minutes, but fuck it. It's an early day. Hopefully tomorrow I'll have more motivation to do a longer day. The refugio is there. And I come here. Would have been a little better to come there. Cause it's a, uh, it's nice and flat, but uh, maybe there are some people passing by. Who knows? At least here, if there are anyone passing, nobody's gonna see me. There, it's gonna that rock is gonna be the seat of my kitchen. I'm gonna cook some tortellini now. Buenos dias. I'm checking that I didn't leave anything behind. Just make sure leave no trace. At the end, I camped here. I had to move my tent last night because after I finished cooking, I realized that the the ground, the, the tent was on top of a little hole where the, that I missed because it was very little of, uh, this is a big one, of these uh, big uh, ants. Not sure you can see them. Um, but yeah, there was like thousands of ants uh, on my ground sheet, and uh, those big ants they make an they make noise. So I was like, they will wake me up at night, and then I got paranoid that they might be chewing through uh, the the floor of my tent. So I just moved the tent. Pleasant night, uh, beautiful stars. Immediately after uh, dinner. There was the Milky Way here. Let's keep on going. Montañas Vacias. This is a shortcut. The official route goes around here. But yeah, it's only like five or six hundred meters. And I will join the Montañas Vacia. I came here because I wanted to be off the, off the trail for uh, camping. So that maybe it was uh, gonna be a little quieter. Pleasant temperature at night, a bit humid. Today also it should be very sunny, but not too hot. 
it should be only like 30, 35 degrees maximum. Yesterday I did uh, 50 kilometers. Let's see if today I can do a little bit more. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. It depends how lazy I am. Another beautiful little highland, very nice. A little farming as well. Very, very beautiful. La Fuente, all right, another village. Now I'm gonna check if there is a grocery shop. And most importantly, if it's open because it's Sunday. But being August and being some tourists around, maybe it's open. Should be open. I found bread in the village. I climbed out of the village and now I'm slowly going down. It's a paved road. As soon as I go on dirt or I find a nice place, I will stop and uh, I have some food and eat my bread. It's lunchtime. The rest area. I had lunch here and cold freezing water over there. It's so cold, you can't keep your hands there. It's freezing. Easy, easy route. Montañas Vacia, beautiful. A lot of climb, but easy. It's rideable. It's never, never too steep. Yeah, there are bits and pieces steep here and there but nothing too crazy i would say easy route lovely forest uh, lots of picnics this is the week everybody's off in uh, in spain august 15 is a uh, this bank holiday so yeah all the offices most businesses are uh, are shut down for, for the vacation, for the holidays. That was a nice descent. I'm gonna hit this village and I think then another long climb. Nice village, nice church, Orihuela del Tremedal. This last climb was so enjoyable because it was between trees and it was all shaded. Very, very nice. And now it's almost six o'clock, quarter to six, so it will start to naturally cool down. Today, I didn't, uh, I didn't feel the heat uh, at all. Very, very pleasant. It was only like 35 degrees, something like this. Very pleasant. Go to the Yamagosi. Muka, ciao Muka. The cow challenge. Who moved first, me or the cow? The cow. Cow one. Took a few pictures. What a beautiful double track. Very, very nice. I had to delete another 50 minutes clip. 
Well, there was a stretch on a paved road and descended into this valley. Now I'll cross the valley and then it starts to, I think I need to cross this mountain. So it's gonna be a fairly decent climb. But I think there is a village before. Quarter to seven. I think I will uh, cycle another two hours and then call it a day. Beautiful, Montañas Vacías. I really, really enjoy riding in these places. So beautiful. Yep, here the village. Griegos. No, continue straight on oh. the to Maceres. I miss my fuente. When I... Here there is a gate to open. Let's keep on going. I just loaded up on water, but I think this road leads to a to a spring. Cierran la puerta. First, I need to open it. Then, I'm gonna close it. Let's see uh, how we open this. Nice. That I've been on, that I respect private property, and I close it safely. Look at the little cow having milk. That's how you drink milk, not from the bottle. Nacimiento del Tajo. Tajo is the biggest river in Spain. I'm sure now someone will correct me. So it's either the longest or the biggest for capacity. Beautiful Montaña Vacías. I prepared uh, my spot for the night. Here is gonna be my kitchen. I'm gonna sit down and cook my tortellini. A bit early, it's a uh, quarter to nine, so 30 minutes to the sunset. But I want to go to bed early. Let's cook dinner. Buenos dias. Tortellini with uh, texturized soy. Today I took my sweet time in the morning, also because I was in the shade, so it was a bit chilly. It was a bit chilly at night. Uh, the temperature dropped significantly last night when I was uh, when I was cooking. Loads of wind until uh, midnight, then it cooled down. Today the temperature should be 10 degrees less than two days ago. It should start to be cold, to be end of summer, only 28 degrees. There's no summer. Below. Another day, Montañas Vacías, back on the road. Look at this beautiful morning in Spain. Beautiful, beautiful. Pleasant temperature, sunshine, dry weather, dry night. Perfect, just perfect. By the way, I forgot, but a friend messaged me this morning. Today, eight years ago, I started my adventure in Alaska. My world tour started on August 14, 2015. from Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. What a ride. What a fucking ride. The power of celebration Make way more generation That's been waiting for you Waiting for you Now it's all so green Now it's all so green Now it's all so 
There you go. This is where the Rio Tajo, uh, the source of Rio Tajo, I think it's here. But I don't really see much water going on. It's uh, kind of disgusting for a, for a spring. Uh, it's the longest river in, in the Iberic Peninsula. It starts here, it goes through Spain, it gets to Portugal, and it gets into the Atlantic Ocean uh, in Lisbon. So it's about uh, a little over uh, 1,000 kilometers. The Nascimento of the Rio Tajo was a bit underwhelming. Big monument, sort of a shitty water. Last night when budgeting for water, I thought I could refill my bottles this morning at the, at the spring of Rio Tajo. I didn't know it was that shitty. So today I'm a little in trouble because now we got into this valley and I think the Rio Tajo is just close to the right side of the valley. Maybe I can stop and uh, by now the river should be a bit bigger and I could take some water there, but man, I didn't see any spring on this side, like... I'm getting thirsty and the first village, I think it's far away. Oh man, if this is the Rio Tajo, it doesn't look too good. You can't see it from here, but it's uh, it's like pond water. Here is even rioting. I thought I would, <laughs> I would even bat in the river today. No. Oop. Rio Tajo. It's depressing. Depressing Rio Tajo. Depressing spring. And like. I've already gone like more than 10 kilometers. How come there are no affluents, like some side springs, nothing? Everything is dry. Is that even possible? And yesterday on the other side of the hill, there were springs every like, I don't know, every other kilometer. Look at that! Wow! Not sure what kind of birds they are. If it's an eagle. Looks like an eagle. I don't know. Another beautiful valley. Very beautiful. It would be wonderful if I can find a spring now. I'm gonna stop and eat something as well. Quarter past one. Finally, finally, some water. It's a bee drinking. And some. Uh... I'm really enjoying today. I thought the beginning was a bit underwhelming, but then we got on this dirt road in the High Tahoe National Park, and it's uh, really beautiful. There's nobody, zero people, zero. Beautiful, beautiful 
village coming up. Oh, paved road. Village coming up. I need to get a cold drink. Either a grocery shop or a bar, but I need to get a cold drink. I basically haven't had any siesta today. I only had a snack very quick. It's 3.30 and I did about 50 kilometers. 50.6. So good progress at the village. The jackpot will be to find a grocery shop a grocery shop open, a grocery shop with refrigerated cold drinks. Well, cold drinks, anyway. So some of the shops, uh, they don't keep it in the fridge. Those are uh, wild plums. I'm not gonna eat them because they are bitter as fuck. It's quarter to four, there is a supermarket in the village. I checked on Google, but yeah, siesta times. It open at six and uh, I might crash a couple of hours because they haven't stopped today. So siesta for me as well. Even though today the temperature is uh, quite manageable, it's around 30. So I didn't need to take a long siesta. This is how alive the villages in Spain are in the afternoon. Ah, this is my stop. That house is inside uh, the stone. Comestibles. It's closed. It's our main little square. That's probably the Ayuntamento. The supermarket was opening at six o'clock. I didn't wait, but leaving the village, I ran into two bike travelers. And uh, I stopped for a chat. They were having a beer outside the bar. And uh, turns out they are Italian. And it's a couple from Italy, and the guy recognized me from uh, the YouTube videos. He said, but are you Davide? I'm like, uh, yeah. And we had a nice chat, and then uh, they made a generous donation to my, to my trip. So all in all, great stop in Cheka. But now I keep going. I was thinking it's a little too much uh, pavement. They should do an alternative dirt for the purists. But I had just one client that was a, a wall. And this one also seemed pretty steep. I'm kind of glad it's paved now. Sono un ragazzo fortunato perché mi hanno regalato un sogno. Sono fortunato, ma se devo dirla tutta, qui non è il paradiso. Eterno delle verità, io mento col sorriso. Dieci cose fatte, me ne è riuscita mezza, dove c'è uno strappo. Tomorrow is a major bank holiday in Spain, so I bought some bread, some uh, chorizo, some cookies, so I have provision for tomorrow. Now the route follows the river, 
So many tourists. It's supposed to be empty Spain, but loads of tourists. Loads of tourists. This is a campsite here. Jesus, it's full. I would not enjoy being there. Although I haven't showered in, uh, I think, seven days. Tonight is not gonna be a great night, I know it. I feel the humidity already. Unless I can find a spot where I'm very high above the river. Luckily, there is this dirt road. The paved road is on the other side of the of the river. We'll see maybe maybe at some point the trail climbs up a little mountain. Another fairly steep climb and see how down there is the river. But like very very down. They're very high, so here be nice to camp but opportunity and here you know even if I want to camp on the side of the road it's too rocky not sure you can see the the river in this place it becomes a crystal clear lagoon it's incredible I wish I could jump in to be honest right let's climb up again started to be tired 20 past 8 See how many kilometers I did today. 82. Here we are quite far from the from the river, but then the road goes down and join the river again. So I think this is my chance to camp. Could be here, it's a bit flat, but next to the road. Maybe up here is gonna be a flat spot. Let's see. What's the surprise here? Yeah, here I think I can camp. Oh, it gets even better. Gets much better. Yep, that's it. What a beautiful spot to camp, even tonight. The River Tajo is down there, so we are quite high, should be dry enough. Would be nice to camp here, but it's too, too many stones, deer poo, so maybe tonight we'll be visited by deer, but I'm gonna camp here. Look how much, uh, Flat area, here is good, that is good, here is good, wonderful. And with this opening in the, in the wood, I can, uh, I can watch the stars, I can watch the Milky Way. And uh, these are uh, St. Lawrence nights, so there is lots of falling stars, so I'll be watching up. Wonderful, wonderful, and it's free, man, it's free, amazing. Breakfast is ready. Wonderful spot to camp, wonderful night. It was a dry night, wonderful spot, and I woke up. Oh, look at the deer. Um, 
I woke up uh, at 5, 5.30, was still very dry. And then I don't know what happened, either uh, the wind stopped or uh, something must have changed and it got really humid. But this was around 6 o'clock, yeah? And then uh, I woke up at 6.30 and it was a little humid. And then it got, uh, oh, another deer, progressively humid. But now the, the sun is uh, is arriving, so let's say five, five, ten minutes, it should dry everything. It will, it will get to the tent and then in, in a few minutes it's dry. And uh, yeah, let me eat my lunch and then my breakfast and then we go. Let's see if uh, there are any more deers coming. There were a few deers during the night, they came. Look, look. Beautiful, they are down there. There are three, four. They are in the sun eating. They are looking at me. Another great morning on the Montañas Vacia. Look at this. At least a great start. You never know. You never know what's gonna happen next. But this is great. The sun is shining, the temperature is very pleasant. Beautiful, beautiful, just beautiful. Let's get into the flow. I want to cross the, the bridge. Look at the water, it's amazing. Crystal clear. Buenas, gracias. That's incredible. Look at the water. Wow. Just wow. It's amazing. <laughs> The single track is uh, unexpected, but very welcome. There, are, uh, there were a couple of places it was, uh, it was a bit complicated with a, with a loaded bike, but slowly but surely, like here, we see where is the best way. If you fell, you go down directly to the river. Beautiful, beautiful, but tough at times. Tough with a loaded bike. Fully loaded, I may add. I think this is the end of the single track. Six vehicles, one after the other. Thank God it was an empty space, empty Spain. It's too, too many tourists in August. I, today is uh, the bank holiday, it's the apex of, uh, of the summer. And so either today or tomorrow, I will just uh, head towards Madrid and I will come back and we resume Montañas Vacia in a week or two. Uh, I just want to be alone. It's too many people. And it's my chance to see Madrid. I 
arrive on top of this hill, there is this little village. I stop for a cold drink, but there is a kind of museum. Interpretation center of the Rio Tajo. And there is a girl that works there, that she lived in South America. She traveled by bike and she's a warm shower host, but in a village about 30 kilometers from here. And uh, she charged my power bank and we talked uh, a little bit. And she offered me to, to go to her home and rest and take a shower, but I mean, it's about 30 kilometers away, crossing the mountains again. So I think it's 35 kilometers. So it's basically one extra day. Yeah, I thought about it, but let's keep going. Maybe I should have gone, I don't know. It's one of those things I'm always, when I'm on a route, I, it costs me a, a little bit to, to change the route. I don't know. She's, uh, she's really nice. We were, uh, she was living in Patagonia. She's a, a guide there. She's a guide in Torre del Paines in Calafate. She lived in Calafate, in Punta Arenas. And she was there. She had her daughter in Punta Arenas. And I think uh, she was there when I was there. So maybe we met in the street, who knows? Anyway, back on dirt. I think that's a tower for monitoring uh, wildfire. The day is winding down, about 30, 35 minutes to sunset. I could start looking for a place to camp or go another little bit. I don't know if I should camp here, because then in the forest it's a uh, it's a bit uncomfortable. I decided to continue because I didn't like that place, but yeah. Not sure where to stop. It's uh, five minutes to the sunset. Maybe less. I think the day is getting shorter. It's probably sunset now. Just that uh, this place is a bit humid. I thought I'd do a few more kilometers because the the road was going up. But yeah, it's uh, it feels a bit humid. And if I feel it when I when I cycle, as soon as I stop and it gets a little dark, it is worse. So let's keep going another bit, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And before it gets too dark, I will, uh, I will just call it a day.
be nice to find a place a little bit open, especially on that direction, so I get the sun in the morning. So if the tent gets wet, it dries very quickly. I don't have to wait too long for the sun to arrive. I think I find a right spot to camp. Here I'm gonna be cooking. Very nice. Here is almost uh, sand. Yeah, beautiful colors. There was a refugio about a kilometer up there, but it didn't look good. I went inside, but I didn't really like it. I prefer my tent. Tortellini is a way of life. Buenos dias, back on the road, Montañas Vacías. Last night was uh, pretty good. There were some people that came with a 4x4 and they didn't see me, but they were very close. And I didn't know what was going on. But I think they dig a hole and they hidden something. Anyway, I was very careful not to make any noise. And then I just fell asleep. And this morning again, I woke up around six and the tent was, was, was not humid. Then I, around seven, it was wet. Hear this noise. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know if it's a, if it's a wild boar or a deer, no, I don't know. Maybe it was just a bird, who knows. the village of Beteta. I'm gonna check the map, but this is my opportunity to go to Madrid. Here in Beteta, I take the executive decision to finish my, the first part of the Montañas Vacías. I'm going to Madrid. I wanna get to know the town and come back and finish the Montañas Vacía and then go towards Barcelona. So, it's either now or never, so it is now. I'm heading to Barcelona. That's where I left uh, the other side, but that's where I left Montañas Vacías. But yeah, this is uh, Beteta, so I'm back on Montañas Vacías. I know someone is gonna say, you're missing 500 meters, fuck it. Uh, what's the point? It's a, it's a paved road. There on the corner there is water. This is the Ayuntamiento. Very nice. Nice and charming Betita. Look, it's 18 degrees, feeling 17 degrees. 17 degrees, it's half of the temperature of two days ago. And remember, there is no summer below 30 degrees. There is a nice lagoon down there. I have this hill to climb and then I go down to a little village and then it's gonna be 
almost 70 kilometers to the next village with lots of uh, climbing. That's it, I think that's the village. Loaded up with water, montañas, vacías, keeps on going. Traffic jam, montañas vacías edition. I've been climbing for a while, I thought I could uh, enjoy a bit of this and but no. This is where I turn left and hit dirt. I have another 10 kilometers of climb. It's so much nicer on dirt though. So much nicer. It's beautiful. Beautiful montañas vacías. I think I'm about 14.50 above the sea level. Asiar, sí. un nombre vasco. Sí. Mis padres de, de Guadalajara. Ah, ok. Mi madre de Zamora, que bueno, yo vasco vasco, sí, he nacido allí, pero no vamos. Entonces no hablas vasco. Sí, sí, hablo. Sí. sí, sí. A friend from uh, País Vascos. Basque country. Look, too light. He needs some weight there. This guy, similarly to the others I met on Montañas Vacía. He traveled very light. He had a problem to find food today. He told me he had to bag at uh, one of the bars to give him some food because uh, this weekend uh, it's like a uh, holiday in Spain, in these pueblos, and everything is uh, already booked in advance. He's only carrying a sleeping pad in a very light sleeping bag. He said he can't sleep uh, outside, so he needs to get to the refugio. The next refugio is in 25 kilometers, which I don't think he'll have too many problems to reach today. But then, tomorrow, he needs to do 150 kilometers. He said that he's... Uh, averaging about 100 kilometers a day. So that's like 50% more. Jesus, what a sad place. They cut all the trees. They didn't leave one fucking tree. Maybe this could be a nice spot to camp actually. Oh well, let's keep going another little bit. The temperature is dropping very fast. Now I'm stuck in this valley. We need to keep going. Luckily, the river is dry, but still a bit humid. I changed valley and it seems much nicer with more opportunities to camp. I wanna keep going another 10 minutes. I think this is it. I don't wanna descend again into a valley. I'm gonna check the map, but 90%. This is where I'm gonna camp. This is perfect. Buenos dias, good morning guys. I'm in the forest looking, looking for adventure. No, I'm in the forest looking for uh, this smash bag that I keep on, uh, on my bike with uh, snacks and a bit of food. And yesterday was full of food. I had lunch for today, I had bread, cheese. I had uh, some kind of Oreo cookie that I find in a supermarket yesterday. I had two boxes for 150 and I ate one so I had one I had some uh, cereal bars and uh, yeah bits and pieces and loads of uh, dry dry fruits that uh, there were an offer on uh, 
in Cuenca on Lidl and I bought them. And usually that bag is tied to my handlebar even during the night. I don't know why last night I took some, uh, some of the dry fruit as a, as a dessert and then I didn't bother to tie the bag to my, to my handlebars and I just put them on a, on a pannier on the vestibule of my tent because I thought, yeah, let's put it on my vestibule and I put it on top. And uh, yeah, at midnight, uh, the biggest fucking fox I ever saw grabbed it. Then I ran out of my tent naked and I found a fox eating, trying to open the bag. And but when she saw me, he ran up, up. So now I went up a little bit, but it's uh, it's 30 minutes. I'm looking for the bag, I found nothing. So that's it. Then at 5 a.m., that fucker came back. I kid you not, he dragged like it's super fucking heavy, the pannier. He dragged out the pannier from my vestibule. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I got back, back pain when I have to leave that fucking pannier. Because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's full of food now. I bought tortellini for the rest of uh, the way. It's dry fruits. Uh, yeah, it's full. There's, uh, there's lots of things in there. It's quite heavy. Anyway, that's the campsite. Yeah, usually I keep the, the mesh bag here and I tighten. it. But you midnight. Peaceful, I sleep very well, except the fucking, the fucking fox. And then I started to have really bad dreams. Like, not bad dreams, but I was in a town, unknown town, called Alhambra. So I suppose it's Granada. <laughs> Very touristy. And for some reason, I pitched my tent in a street that was not used a lot, but it was like a paved street near a junction. And I, and I put my bike there. And, but there was a warm shower host and I went over to see if he would uh, uh, host me for the night, but I left everything there. So then I, when I was at the warm shower host and he said, no, I was thinking, okay, I'll go back and I'll sleep in the tent, but probably by now uh, they robbed everything or a car ran over it. Very weird, very weird. I'm fucking weird. Not only culinary disaster, also monetary disaster, this fucking fox. I would estimate at least seven, eight euros worth of food that I have to replace it here in the mountains. It's double cost and the mesh. The mesh bag was free. Was a uh, was a mesh bag that uh, I bought some gear and it came into that. Uh, I can't remember if it was a piece of clothing or some camping gear that came into that mesh bag, so it was free. But there was a little carabiner. Now I have to use this one that is quite expensive from Sea to Summit, and this one I use it to to store my rain gear uh, during the winter. Or if, if it's a period that rains a lot and it doesn't rain, then here I can put my hard shell, the jacket, the pants, uh, shoe covers, and I can store them and uh, tie them on the handlebar. And then uh, when it stops rain, when it rains again, I can take them out and put them easily in. So yeah, at some point I'll need to buy a, one of, a new one of these. Or probably this is as big as big uh, enough for my ring gear, but it's probably too big for food. So financial, financial disaster. Foxes.
back on the road, Montañas Vacias, with a new bag. It's a little bit too big for food, probably. But it is what it is. I lost my lunch. Terrible, terrible. I would estimate at least 20 euros worth of damage between the bag, the food, the food that costs double in these mountains. Tough climbing right off the bat. I don't know if I'm on top or I need to climb uh, up there. Let's find out. I think this is the last bit of climbing. It has to be. There might be a little bit more climbing before starting this. That's it. Beautiful, beautiful. Very, very beautiful. Very nice view. The famous rewarding views when you get to the top of the climb. It's almost 2 p.m. I could have used that bread and cheese, to be honest. I had to snack on uh, dry fruit and sobaos, which is okay. No complaining. Nah. I think here there is the refugio where the guy last night was gonna come. Let's check out the refugio. Looks nice from the outside. Good. Good and uh, good and clean. Someone left some uh, sardines. Good, good stuff. Oh wow, look at that. That's a good gift. Very nice refugio. It would have been nice to, to arrive there and uh, sleep with the guy well, in separate beds. I mean, there was a condom there, but I'm not sure I was attracted to this guy. Um, yeah, it would have been nice to sleep there. It would have saved me from that fucking thief of a fox. That's a very nice refugio. It's clean, it's nice, cozy. I like it. Schwalbe, Nobinik. Noise of the Nobinik. Eating up the tarmat. Yet another dam. Not sure if it's low or... I love these mountains. Different uh, layers of sediments. Beautiful. Beautiful. The village is too small for groceries. At least let's, uh, let's get water. Not much going on in Bermud. No grocery. The bar is there, but it's closed. But I feel for the guy I met yesterday, because he, uh, he was sure, first of all, that there was a bar after 11 kilometers after the refugio, which I told him there wasn't. I mean, I told him I'd be very, very surprised if there is a bar in the middle of nowhere. Then he said, OK, uh, I'll get some food at the village. Yep. I didn't see one single soul in the village and the bar is closed. There's another village in uh, 12 kilometers. I would guess. There on the map, it looks slightly bigger, like maybe like five more houses. 
the village is coming up in uh, one or two kilometers. It's just behind those trees. But I had a look online and uh, apparently Next there are no groceries. So I checked the following one, also no groceries. And then uh, the third village will have groceries. It's not too far. I think it's uh, about 15 kilometers. So big. I don't understand how there isn't even a small grocery shop. Look, the village is also a new suburb. Buena. Hay una tienda de alimentación por aquí? Hay una tienda de alimentación? Sí. Ah, okay. Gracias. Ah, uh, the suburb has a chiringuito. Looks too fancy and expensive for me. But if you can come on, if you come on Montañas Vacia, here you can uh, chill. I bet you can, they let you even camp here. First climb to grocery done. Nothing. The grocery shop is closed because in the afternoon they don't open. The panaderia, the bakery, same. I ask a, a lady near the, the grocery and she told me I can give you some bread. She gave me a, a bag with uh, some food. When I, she gave me a bed with some bread and uh, I think some fruit. So, success anyway. Let's see, I would like to do uh, another 10 kilometers, more or less. We'll cycle uh, until 8, 8.30. After eight o'clock, the first uh, good opportunity I find, I'll camp. The sun is starting to set. Slowly but surely going up. The road should be going up for about five kilometers. Why is it always steeper at the end of the day? Steeper and steepest. This climb is very steep. Three different walls. It's not over yet. Still have uh, another kilometer of climb. Then it goes down a bit, another two kilometers. The sun has set and I pitch my tent. I put on uh, an underwear t-shirt under this, mid layer. I'm gonna clean my face to remove the sunscreen. I'm putting on my dawn jacket and uh, I'm gonna cook tortellini. But look at the moon, almost full moon. Beautiful colors, purple, blue. Beautiful. I would say almost an African sunset. Buenos dias, I'm finishing breaking up camp. Very nice place to camp. Uh, it was a very dry night, which I really appreciated. The other night was the fox. Last night was the, was the ships. I started to hear in the bells of the ships when I was cooking my tortellini last night. They arrived here around midnight. There were thousands of them, so I had to come out of the tent and just throw some rocks. We 
with with the light and scare them away. So it took them an hour to go through. Let's keep on going. Montañas Vacia adventure during the day and during the night. There you go. Leave no trace. Unlike the ships. Let's go to the next village. It's very, very tiny. I'd be surprised there is any shops at all. What a climb. I think I, it was a good call to camp where I camped last night because then the road was going down and then up to this hill. Oh, there is, a, there is the van of the baker in the square. Let's see if I'm fast enough to get there before he leaves. Some of these villages, they have uh, bread delivery in the morning. And I just saw the, the white van in the, in the main square. I think it's the baker. Look, look, this woman is coming back with bread. It's a guy. And now, uh, Look at this, panaderia. Well, I got two big breads, and then I saw like a, a bag with little croissants, and I got it. It's uh, the most expensive bread I ever bought, I think. Five euro fifty, the damage. Anyway, I have, uh, I have food. There was another uh, truck selling uh, fruit and vegetables. To be honest, I wanted to go there. I thought I'll, I'll get some bread and some vegetables or some fruit. But I decided I didn't want to mortgage my bike to buy some fruit. Today it's loads of climbing, a lot. And that's the first surprise. Nice wall. It's a little wall. It's not fully a wall, and it's quite steep. I'll be proud of myself if I don't stop. I barely have traction. But I need to do it. Yeah, right. I made it. Beautiful landscapes. I will miss Spain. Not sure exactly when I will leave, I will fucking miss it. So peaceful. This guy barely said hello. Well, one of the guys said hello. That's it. Where are you going? Where are you coming from? Are you doing this route, that route? I really don't understand. I mean, just asking how are you? Would have hurt, you know? I would have not slowed them down that much. Already someone that travels with two backpacks on a bicycle is now making the smarter decision on bike traveling on my book. It's not super pleasant when going down is as slow as going up. Sardines are not my favorite food. I never, never eat them. Well, rarely, very, very rarely. But apparently they're good for you. So I'm forcing myself to eat a little bit more healthy. Another paved segment. Beautiful views though. Comunidad de Teruel. Back in the province of Teruel, I guess, still a good few days away from uh, completing Montañas Vacias. Alobras, five kilometers. 
And they have a signpost for Montañas Vacía. Mirador de la Tejadas. MV point number four. I think MV points are um, corners in shops or bars along the Montañas Vacías where you can find something that could be useful during a, a route like this. And I think it's uh, bike parts like uh, tubes or tires or chain, things like that. And even, I'm not fully 100% sure, but I think there might be like camping, gas, canisters, things like that. Back on dirt, finally. Beautiful. Very, very beautiful views. This is a nice orchard. Technical pit stop. Very nice village with a swimming pool. A lot of villages in Spain, even very small ones, they have a swimming pool. But they have a natural swimming pool as well. Little snack. Oh, let me see. Uh, some figs and some hazelnuts. Let's check out the hazelnut tree. Oh, even those apples look sweet. But I wanna see if I can get some hazelnuts here. I'll take a few of those. I got a handful of hazelnuts, four or five apples. Torre Baja. It means the lower tower. And actually, I think this is the lowest point on Montañas Vacías. This is left. Buena. I'm following the river upstream a few kilometers and then up the mountain. 726. Let's say another, another hour, yeah, 826. Yeah, around 8.20, 8.30, I will call it a day. I think here there are uh, lots of snakes. Look, one skin there. And two here. You see the head. And also here. Now they're dry because with the, with the sun. But these are non-poisonous. See that the, the head is round. No problem, no problem. I could put my hand there. I guess the fan starts here. These fucking guys follow me around all the time. Like in a kilometer and a bit, already pretty high on the valley. Beautiful. Beautiful on this side as well. It's already eight o'clock. The sun will set soon. Wish list for my campsite tonight. Level, free of stones, shelter from the wind, and exposed to the east. That's it. Ah, no foxes and no sheep. What an incredible spot. Beautiful montañas of Sias. Beautiful. Look at this. It's incredible. Guys, get on a bike and explore the world. Fuck the pension. Fuck the retirement. Fuck everything. I wonder if I should camp here. Let's keep going. This is the most enjoyable time of the day to ride the bike. 8.27. If I was through through my world, I should stop now. But well, let's keep on going a little bit more. Be nice if up here, it flattens a bit.
but apparently not. Let's keep on going. Meanwhile, the sun is about to disappear. Figa se non spiana qui sclero parco. We see a house up there. At the very top, not the hut here. Like an old farmhouse. But it might be another 15 minutes. I'm ready to come. No. I arrived to the house. Bah, don't like this. The stones everywhere anyway. Oh, 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 what do I see here? This could be fun. And it's a bit windy tonight. Yeah, no, fuck it. I mean, I could use the, I could use one, four of those bricks to stake down the tent. And the wind is only until uh, 11 o'clock. It's now dark, but I climbed another hill after the house. 200 meters I have, 200 meters I'm on top. And there I'll camp. The moon looks like a little dot to you. It's a fucking big ball to me. Good morning, buenos dias. This is where I camp. Beautiful spot at the end, arrived here in the dark. The trail uh, is where there is the trees, basically, the first line of trees. And then I saw this dirt road. I thought, fucking hell, disaster, disaster. I'm back, sort out the problem. It's the click stand, it's, it's a bit precarious. So yeah, I arrived here in the, in the night. Good progress. I think I can finish the, the Montañas Vasias in three days now. Beautiful night last night, very dry. I didn't even pitch the, the I didn't fit the fly sheet on my tent. And yeah, I slept very well. Until the, yeah, I slept well, but <laughs> different night, different animals. There were some wild boars that were coming at some point. It was like 4.30 and I had to scare them away. So yeah, so many fucking animals and wildlife in uh, in Spain every night I'm bothered by a different kind of animal and I was thinking this morning if it was uh, if I was in Africa I'd be like I'd be shitting myself like with all these noises close to my tent and I camped uh, the whole way through Africa and I didn't really have any very close animal to my tent new day on montañas vacías Let's go! That farm over there, I can't see exactly what trees are those. To be honest, it's too far. But they have a cannon, I guess, to, yeah, did you hear? To keep away the birds, I think. It goes off every few minutes. The whole fucking night I could hear it. I mean, it was distant, I could hear it. And also they have uh, speakers with music. That's some commitment to keep the birds away. Here they planted some trees to protect them from animals to eat them. They put uh, those cans of drinks on top of a, a metal stick. So they rattle and they make noise. Fellow bike traveler, the Montañas Vacías from Catalonia. Luis. Luis. Bienvenido a España. Montañas vacías, espectacular. ¿Lo recomendarías? 
completamente, pero más como una experiencia vital de vida que, como, que no como un paseo de mountain bike ¿Sí? deportivo. Sí, sí. Tomarse tiempo, ¿no? Tomarse tiempo, rodar, encontrarse a gente, charlar con cualquier persona que te encuentres. Y irse solo. <ríe> y, y luego tramos solo y pensar tus cosas. Claro. Es espectacular como experiencia de vida. Claro, sí, sí. Completamente recomendable. Una ah. cosa que hay que hacer como mío una vez en la vida. Claro. O dos. O dos. Dale, gente. Venga. Animarse, no joda. Look at the... Esto es una pasada, eh. Look at the view, guys. Es una foto aquí. Es una pasada. Look at the view. Oh, yeah. While we talk about politics. Look at that fucking road. Esto es Río de Eva. Getting higher and higher, but still a long way to climb. Oh, climbing up. I don't know what's going on today. I'm tired. First major climb is done now. Ah, look, Luis. Hay a refugio? Ah, uh, we're going down. Bad news. Because I need to get to 2,000 something now. This last climb was... Uh, it's quite challenging. The sun is warm, but the air is freaking cold. The sun is gone as well. It's a long climb, I think another 10 kilometers more or less. I just found a fossil. Very cool. There you go. If you do the Montañas Vacia, the fossil is there. Actually, it's full of fossil. Look, another one there and another one down there. This climb is long, definitely too long. You can breathe now a little bit. And then it will start going up again. GoPro, stop recording. On top of this hill, but there is more to climb. Now we are at 1965. Beautiful ride, but be nice to make a bit of progress. Only 30 kilometers and it's 330. Ooh. I doubt we got to 70 today. That was my goal. That's the peak. But there are the antennas. Right. Last push. And at some point I'll have to stop and eat lunch. It's 330. We fucking made it. To Pico Chavalambre, I think it's called. It's very cold. Very windy. That was a long climb. Demasiado fácil con la moto, eh? No te fácil. Mucho peso la bici, ¿no? Sí. We are on top. Pico de Javalambre. There's not much going on. Now we're going down. It's cold, but manageable. I said hello to Luis now because he's gonna stay in a refugio that is on the other side of this hill. It's a refugio that you have to pay. It's not a free refugio. They are managed, so he will eat there, sleep, take a shower. Fancy, very fancy. Would have been nice to take a shower. Should have gone there to take a shower and pay for a shower. Seven days no shower. Let's keep on going. Let's try to get to Teruel by Friday. Still haven't had lunch. What time is it? Wow, almost five o'clock. 20 to five.
back on paved road, I think. Back on dirt, it wasn't that long on the pavement. I think now I'm gonna remove my, my jacket. What a beautiful road. Very beautiful. This sand, very, very nice. Here is much warmer. I'm actually enjoying it. the fuck is going on? Who fans the fucking trail? Still going down, but it's loads of up and down. It's loads of uh, little hills. Six o'clock. I haven't had lunch yet. 52 kilometers in. I should eat something. I'm trying to get to a village at the bottom and there take a little break. Look at this. Huh. I'm back to the Via Verde, Via Verde Ojos Negros, the one that took me to Teruel. Ah, ah, you must have, probably you've seen this already on the video that I published before. Montañas Vacias. Let's see if the grocery shop is open for once. I left the village, success. The grocery was open. I got one bread, one can of beans, a little fucking empanada, and some cookies that they're not even that good. 660. Inflation is getting worse every day in Spain. And there's never prices on shit. Only the beans had the price on. One euro 40. Another wonderful evening ride. I have uh, seven or eight kilometers on this road. Albona, I think is my last village today. Crossing the Rio Valbona, as you can see, it's, it's a big river. Now let's find some water. Fuente, where is the Fuente? 827. Be about time to find a place to camp. I need to go up a little bit because there is a river and a, and a reservoir, 78 kilometers. All good. That's the reservoir. There is a place I could camp down there, but be humid and there are some people there. I think there is a picnic area also up there. Let's keep on going through drier lands. Also, more kilometers tonight, less kilometers tomorrow. The twilight zone. Beautiful. Beautiful Montañas Vacias. Another wonderful sunset on Montañas Vacias. The rain on the trail is very rocky, but this field is quite tough mud find the sand so I will find a place here a bit level clean from stones probably here the sunset over there the sun will rise on this side so anywhere around here is pretty good bike is over there Tortellini and beans tonight. Huge, huge moon. I don't think it's gonna look very huge to you on the screen, but it is big. I still, it's one day or two before the 
full moon. This morning, pleasant temperature, slightly humid at night, but not even that much. Much higher temperature than the last two mornings, and I think it's because we are at very low elevation. Here we are at 900 something. Today, another long, long fucking climb. So from here on, it's gonna be about 70 kilometers of climbing. Let's go, another day on Montañas Vacias. The tough, tough day today. My sunglasses are a bit dirty, but I think these trees are uh, peaches. Too fucking bad, I'm late. Too late for peaches. Today is Thursday. We need to complete Montañas Vacia by tomorrow. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, loads of rain. I don't want to be stuck at 2,000 meters with the rain, so... I better get up there today. Another charming little village. This one is actually nice. Very nice. Very nice church. Nice castle. Of course, you didn't get to see much because when I press record on my GoPro, it turns on after like 40, 50 seconds. First climb of the day. I think I have uh, 15 kilometers to the pass. Already quite up. And up there is where we were yesterday. I have another seven, six, six to seven kilometers up to this hill. And then uh, it's gonna up and down for another 30, I think. This is so peaceful. The tourists are gone from Montañas Vacias. So, so nice. The little calves, they look kind of sad. I'd be sad as well if I have had to stay the whole day on a, on a steep incline. Just give them some level field, no? Muka, ciao Muka. The cows are just a little dot now. Little dots. Let's keep on going. Beautiful. Puente de la Condesa. There's not a lot of coming out, but I think I will uh, stop here for lunch. It's uh, 1.30. It took an hour lunch break. It was needed, to be honest. I was tired. I ate some bread and uh, sardines, tomato sardines, and some sobaos some dry fruit. It's getting cloudy very fast. There was a blue sky and now it's full of uh, big clouds. And uh, yeah. The view! I'm actually enjoying this descent because uh, it's quite fast. The trail is uh, quite smooth. Yesterday coming down was such a pain. Those are big rocks. Linares de Mora. Let's keep on going up to 2000 meters now. It's all climbing. This village was, uh, was a fucking wall of Andalusian proportion. It's done. It's in the bag. Let's go. Let's go.
to 2,000 meters. Fuck you now. I better get up before it's dark. There is a refugio. I will sleep in the refugio tonight. Unless there are some fuckers there. By the way, my GoPro died. So let's go to all the way now. And maybe tonight I'll have a look at it. Plums. The small ones. They're quite good though. What a wonderful single track. Very, very nice. It was a bit challenging at the beginning. And now it's really fun. The trail turned into a paved road again. Oh well. It means I'll be a bit faster climbing. I might reach the top before it's dark. Or maybe not. Back on a trail. I think I have uh, 12 kilometers to the top. Very close to the refugio. A lot, a lot of elevation. There was a big dark cloud that was bothering me. It started raining a little bit, drizzling, but it's been pushed away, luckily. That's it. If it stays dry tonight. Beautiful ride though. What a ride. So peaceful, silent. The only thing I snap another bolt on uh, on the Frankenstein thing that holds my anything cages. So I lost a bit of time there. Beautiful ride, peaceful. It's a bit chilly. The more I'm going up, the more it gets chilly. But luckily, inside the, the woods, there isn't wind. So that helps. There is a refugio here. It doesn't look like in good conditions, but let's check it out. It's a barn, and this side is closed. Let's keep on going. Baldinares, I think that skills are worth 1700 and 2000. These chair lifts are old as fuck. Okay, now we are going down and then there is the option to go up to the peak for three kilometers or two kilometers and then come back down. I think I'll, uh, I'll give up on that. Let's, let's have a look, but I think I will just start to go down. Maybe I should just start to wear my clothes because it's pretty cold here. Beautiful, really beautiful mountains. If I can descend to the refugio and find out if there are people there or not. I feel a bit self-conscious. They ate no shower. So that is the situation. I'm here. They suggest to go up to this peak. It's about two kilometers, short of two kilometers. And then come back down because then the trail 
continues here. Look, it's cold. It's the end of the day. I'm tired and my knees start to hurt a little bit. I'm starting to descend. And here, there is a refugio, if you can see. The refugio is okay, but I think I'll go back and go down. It's, it's okay. It feels, uh, I don't know. I prefer to sleep in my tent. Let's go down then. Sky is on fire. Oh, we're tired, guys. Buenos dias. We are in this uh, ermita of the church. It's outside this village. Very cold and humid here. But if we put the tent under the roof, it's gonna be very dry also. There's no humidity coming out of from the floor here. The fly sheet was unnecessary. It's dry. In and out. I put a fly sheet because uh, I was afraid maybe they could see the tent from the road and the green fly sheet make it, makes it a little better when you start camp. It's more difficult to see the, the tent at night. Now, let's make some tortellini, pack up and get to the well and finish this adventure of Montañas Vacias. That's it, my hotel, back on the road. Last day of Montañas Vacias. Let's see what's the adventure today. Last day of sun. These are the views this morning. I've been passed again <laughs> by the two guys uh, from Barcelona that they are not very talkative and they didn't say hello three days ago or four days ago where I met them. Then I went past them the same day. I don't know where they stopped, but when I was with Luis, I met them again. And I didn't meet them yesterday and I met them again today. First climb today on paved road first descent on paved road too bad such a beautiful forest they deserve some dirt definitely this nice picture. Let me take a nice picture of this village. So here you can choose. This is tap water from the village uh, pipes and this is the one uh, a spring. Guess which one I'm gonna drink? Spring one. The one not treated nor controlled. Acqua di montagna, il gusto ci guadagna. Dirt! Dirt!
no progress. About 40 kilometers to go. Nice. Very, very nice. Immerse in nature. That's the feeling. I would guess I need to go left, but I'm not sure. So I will just check on the map. Nope. I need to reverse. Reverse, reverse, reverse. I need to go right. My GoPro is having a moment. I tap to turn it on and it starts a minute later. There was a fence. I was saying uh, they love to fence everything in, uh, in Spain. One of the last views. It's getting closer to the end. Another fucking fence. I wonder if there is uh, electricity in this fucking thing. It is actually a plastic handle to open and close. No problem, even if there is electricity. Beautiful. I need to check uh, what time the rain starts tomorrow and then make a plan for after Montañas de Sias. This is where I stop to have lunch to this little village. 30 kilometers away. I use this, uh, today is, uh, is a little warmer. Tomorrow is gonna get very cold. It's gonna be 17 degrees, but today is, uh, is warmer. So I, I shaved my head because I haven't showered in uh, nine days today. And uh, I wash a little bit my, myself. And I wash my my t-shirt that was filthy and uh, and the hat. So let's keep on going. This must be the most straight street in Spain. Up on the other side. It's been on the top on this side. It's uh, it's the last climb I think. The last. Long climb at least. Then it should be mostly downhill till Teruel. Another two kilometers climbing. And then I'll start to descend, I think. I don't even want to check the map. This better be the highest point today. And it better be 99% descent from here to Terwa. I'm exhausted. And yeah, I don't know. I just want to be done. I'm already thinking about the next two days of, of rain. This is a highway. A dirt highway. Looks like we are starting to go down. I 
Anate capisce. on a smaller trail but I think now we really go down fast fast and furious now where 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 uh, turn by turn navigation failed let's say the last hour of montañas was yes it's coming to an end like all good things. I think now it's really 10 kilometers to go. I made a mistake before. Now, 10 kilometers to go. The end is near. Somewhere around here is where I camped uh, when I got to Terwell. Maybe a kilometer back. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, I think we, we passed it. Or maybe not. But getting closer to the river. That's where I camped. Uh, trail is over. I'm on the outskirts of the river. On the bridge. I'm near to the square. Surya Bike Packing is a bike shop in Teruel where you can rent bikes to do Montañas Vasia. And you can rent the bikes with all, with all the bags, different kind of bikes, um, drop bars, flat bars, everything. Whatever you need, yeah. Surya, uh, we have. Yes, and you can see also if, you, if you're missing some bags or some camping stuff. Gas canisters, uh, dry food. Yeah, they have straps. They have a bit of everything. Yeah, See. Nalgene. So a little bit of everything. So a this little, is a, a and, little selection. Of and you can packing. get also the, um, the, the maps for Montañas Vacia here. No? Yes, we have the, the official we, map. We have the kits yeah. from Montañas Vacias. Yeah, very nice. With the patch, the stickers. Yeah. So Surya by packing, you, I will put the, um, the name so you can find it. And when you start Montañas Vasia, if you're missing something or you want to rent the bike with, with all the bags and equipment, those are the guys. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Montañas Vasias is on the bag. I'm done, officially. La Plaza de... I forgot the name of the square, but this is where you start and where you finish Montañas Vacia. It was, uh, was a great route, highly recommended. It's not as brutal as uh, Badlands, very rideable. There's loads of climbing, obviously, but pretty rideable. And uh, yeah, very, very good route. <laughs>